Okay, Barry. You're down here in E-Town. This is one of your brick and mortar stores. Your truck, ABC Food, came behind uh, McGill's, McGill's in there in Frankfurt. And I started looking at what you guys had, and I'm seeing fresh fish. Now, I've been in fisheries for a lot of years. That's what, that was my work. I know a fresh fish when I see one. So I'm looking at this stuff, and I'm seeing these raw reds, which Nikki's crazy about. So we take them home, and it's absolutely fresh. So the whole process here is fascinating to me. So we decided to take a trip down to your neck of the woods. Now, you don't live here in Kentucky. You, you live in Alabama. That's right. Beautiful little island in there, yep. Dolphin Island. You're from there. You know everybody there. Yeah. Everybody knows you. You're yeah. kin to everybody down there. Yeah. But you've been fishing that little area since you were old enough to put your feet in the water, weren't you? Yes. My dad used to put us in the water before he'd go to work. And we'd go around at 10, 11 years old in a boat and wow. stay out there all day. But you know what? There's no nothing like growing up that way. No. I wouldn't trade it for anything. But this is an educational segment. I wanted to see, I started being fascinated, looking around some of the other products you have. I look at your, I like crab, who doesn't like crab meat? <laughs> and then yeah. your oysters, you gotta love fresh oysters. So my thought is, let's go with Barry. I wanna enter Barry's world, Dolphin Island, and I wanna see what happens on a daily basis. So when we went down there, first of all, we had to fish. That's right. Had to catch some fresh fish. Can't go down there without doing that. I'm still physically sore. <laughs> I'm, I mean, I've never, ever, I would say active fishing time. I was kind of keep an eye. I'd say maybe we fish for 40 minutes and have 700 pounds of fish in a boat. Yeah, about that. It's ridiculous. And that's what you and two other grown men fish. I caught most of them, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Unbelievable. I mean, the, the resource down there is really on fire. It is. I mean, but you know how it, sheep's head. We, we went out there early in the spring. Yep. That's good eating. It is. That's really good eating. They're, they're ugly. They're ugly. But they, they got just as good a meat as a snapper, but there's not as much on them. And they don't have the name. Yeah. But you don't have to go through, jump through the hoops to catch them like you do on a snapper. So here we are. Now I'm in heaven. To you, it's work. What I want huge. And some of these fish, they were physically pulling me to the side of the boat. I mean, these, the way they fight, it doesn't compare to freshwater fish. It's unreal. Well, they all pull straight down, too. They so. do. So here we have beside us some fish that were caught right. in that situation. So we know how that happens. Take them down there, you bring them, put them in ice, you, you gut them, you take care of them. Mm -hmm. But some of the other stuff that I wondered about, I thought, okay, how does Barry get this fresh crab? So we went to Bayou Le Battery. That's right. Did I pronounce that right? Yeah, that's where Forrest Gump was supposedly took place, but but it didn't. It, they filmed it up in Carolina, but the story takes place down there. We really do process more seafood there probably than anywhere else in the world. So I'm sorry, the first one, let's let's talk about this, this crab operation. Mm -hmm. Where are they getting these crabs from? The, most of the crabs come from Louisiana. We do right. have a lot of Alabama crabs, but most of them come from Louisiana. There's just a lot more marsh down there in water. And uh, they come in every afternoon. The docks, you know, let our shops know what they got. And then we send 18 wheelers down there to pick them up overnight. They come back, they get here about two or three o'clock in the morning in, uh, in Bayou Battery, and they boil them. They got some, they got people- that's big boilers. boilers. Yes. They boil, some of them boil a thousand pounds at a time. Wow. Uh, they drop them down, they boil them. And uh, those people just pull them and get them ready for about 6 a.m. The pickers come in. And that's the people that sit there and pick. And, and uh, it's a tough job. And, and they, they get paid by the pound. It's totally you paid on production. So um, You know, you see that. You see picking and just this muscle memory. Just yes. one, you know, it's just amazing. And you think, oh, these poor people aren't, aren't getting paid anything. They get paid by the pound. And the more they work. So these that's people right. are driving Mercedes and Audis. And I mean, they're doing OK. I was surprised the one lady was looking you and I and never missed a beat. Never missed she a beat. She picked a crab. She looked at that camera like, what's going on here? And was not even looking at it. Nope, I couldn't do it. It's I not like picking <laughs> snow crabs either. I mean, this is little crabs. Every little piece of meat came out of there. Yes. Then shipped right up here. Most of that's sold before it ever gets put in that can. Wow. Um, we got people like myself standing there waiting to, to get it as soon as it comes. Now, we pick all our own up, so there is no rotation time between us. Uh, we pick up every, twice a week, and we pick it up. It's here the next morning, just like it would be at a retail shop down there. Let's talk about oysters. I saw that process. These guys, I have never seen anything like it. You know, of course, me and one arm, it takes me about a half hour to get one open. Right. They're doing 10 bags in an hour? Yes. They're good. But I tell you what, I mean, that's another thing. I, I couldn't do that one for a living. I mean, I can open them, but I'm pretty good. I grew up doing it, but not like them guys. I mean, they get paid by the, they get a dollar fifty for every pound of meat they put in a bucket. Wow. A, about that, depending on what shop they're at. But that's about what it is, and 
and that's tough. And I mean, they're, that makes for guy, don't don't arm wrestle none of them. Those guys <laughs> got some strong forearms. I agree. I mean, they open the oysters for ten hours a week. So basically, they pop them out, they rinse them, they make sure that they're not getting a lot of extraneous material. Right. Yeah, they showed you that. Yeah, they, they, they run them through and it gets the shells off. But he puts them. The oysters we sell get put back in their natural water. Yeah. We just strain the shells off of them, dump them back in their natural water as opposed to putting them in fresh water takes away a lot of the flavor. You got that nice briny taste. You have to wash them though to get some of the, like what they say, parasites. I mean, it is a living shellfish. Um, they, they do wash them to get some of the parasites off of them. I'm telling you what, the whole process, I mean, you can talk about seafood all day long, but once you're down there and you actually go to those particular areas and see the stuff coming off the boats, and then right here, it's a pretty quick turnaround. One more fascinating thing that I didn't know until recently. You know, I've traveled down there for years, fished out of the Keys, fished out of Gulf Shore, so on and so forth. You can go out with Barry and fish. Yeah, yeah, we'll take you fishing. That's what I've done, that's my trade. I've, I, you know, we were commercial, uh, charter fishermen all my life, and seasons and the uh, bag limits kind of put a hamper on it. But now you got a lot more people coming down there that want to go fishing, they don't care what they keep. But if you want to go keep fish, perfectly legal, 100%, we do what we call a commercial fishing experience. So we sell you fish by the pound. It's the only way we can do it legal, even when snapper out of season. We take you out there fishing to catch them yourself. And uh, and they're yours, I mean. That's the interesting part. Being, being from Fish and Wildlife. Yes. I didn't know how all this works. So I said, what happens at the end of the day? You got to call in every day. Yes. If you're fishing, you got to tell them yes. how much you think you're going to catch, and then at the end of the day, they're going to check you, and right. then they follow you to your to your house, your yes. fish house, and watch you clean them. Yep. They're great people, though. They're friendly people. They're not like breathing down your neck. They got. They're protecting a, the resource. They got a job to do, and I'm glad yeah. they do it. Because yeah. if not, you see how many fish is out there. Oh yeah. If they didn't do it, everybody'd be catching fish. Yeah. Now we pay an arm and a leg to be able to do it. Right. It costs us a fortune. Uh, I mean, just our permit to catch them is about $20,000. And that don't even really give you the right to catch snapper. Once you got that, if you don't have any quota that belongs to you, you have to pay to lease it, which is, can be up over $4 a pound. So every pound of red snapper we bring in here costs us, for, on average, about $4 a pound. That's before we pay for bait, ice, fuel, or help. Yeah, so, boat. I mean, there's a lot of stuff that goes in there. That's what I meant earlier by saying you don't have to jump through hoops to catch the sheep in. Dude, I have a whole new respect for what you do. And, you know, we take it for granted. We get to eat all this great <laughs> seafood. But, you know, it didn't just show up here. There's a lot of work goes on by a lot of people. Hey, before I started selling and cooking, I didn't have all this. I was eating it. And I could eat it all day. I really, not because I sell it, but I really enjoy eating it. Well, I enjoyed the whole process and seeing the whole work. And I'm sure our folks out there will too. Thanks again, Mary. Thank you, bud. It's great.